Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Firearms Auction. And we have a really rare one today. This is a just prior to the Civil War conversion of a Jenks breech-loading Navy carbine. Now, this is a conversion that was done by a gentleman by the name of James Merrill. Uh, he lived in Baltimore and he was both an inventor and a businessman and the Merrill Arms Company was responsible for a bunch of different things. For one thing, he patented an improvement to the Jenks carbine. Of course, the Jenks gun is what we looked at yesterday, so if you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at it. That's a really cool carbine on its own. Um, but Merrill thought he could improve on it, and he was probably right. So, in addition to that, by the way, he his business in Baltimore was also an importer, they were agents or distributors, uh, retailers for Colt and Allen and & Wheelock and some other companies. Apparently, he actually spent a year working at the Russian Sestriatsk arsenal. Um, the guy had been there and done that. He was an intelligent, skilled, and very successful inventor and businessman. Anyway, uh, he thought he could improve on the Jenks, and so he, he patented this system in 1858. and. That very same year, he uh, presented the, the conversion to uh, officials at the Washington Navy Yard. Uh, General Dahlgren, in fact, took a look at it, thought, yeah, this actually has some potential. And uh, the Navy placed an order for 300 of the, conver of the uh, 300 converted Jenks guns. The Navy had enough of these uh, Jenks carbines sitting in storage that you know, they handed 300 of them over to Merrill, along with some money, and uh, he came back shortly thereafter with converted guns, and the Navy immediately returned them all because apparently the spring that holds the uh, locking lever closed, which you'll see in just a moment, apparently that spring was too weak. So he took the 300 guns back, fixed the spring, and then ended up returning 240 carbines, which were then duly accepted by the Navy uh, back into service. And that was it. So the, the conversion was, I guess, a little more expensive than they really wanted or didn't turn out to be as necessary as they thought it would be or as useful. For one thing, we apparently nobody knows what happened to those extra 60 guns that uh, were converted and then returned. Uh, and then the 240, that's a really small order. So these are really scarce guns today. So I have here uh, an original Jenks and Merrill's conversion thereof. You can see that Merrill's version of the gun is it really lacks that really svelte elegant style that the original had, but he did make a number of definite improvements to it. So let's take a look at those. For one thing, the Merrill carbine now has a proper rear sight instead of just a, uh, a kind of a cut notch in the back of the loading lever. And typical of uh, carbines of this period, it has three flip up, uh, ap flip up notches, a 100 yard, a 300 yard, and a 500 yard. The front sight stayed the same as on the original Jenks guns, although it looks like I think he actually made that a little bit narrower, which is probably a good idea. Um, but it's still uh, one piece in the, uh, the front barrel band there. Merrill also converted the original side hammer system to a more traditional uh, top mounted uh, or, or vertically swinging hammer. I don't know exactly why he had to do that, but uh, it is certainly more conventional. And then, most substantially, he changed up the locking system. So, on the original gun, it was really just pressure and a little bit of, uh, of a guard from the hammer that kept this lever down. On Merrill's version, we have a little spring-loaded catch here that locks under the rear sight block, like that. So to open it, you pull that back, lift up, and open the breech. The original uh, Jenks and Ames markings have been scrubbed off of the lock plates. And Merrill added his own marking to the top of the new locking lever. Uh, J.M. Merrill, Baltimore, that would have originally said, and patent uh, July, that's going to be 1858. What Merrill did was basically move the loading lever backwards in the action. He sealed up the hole uh, in the, the original loading hole, and now these were loaded right from the back. And then, of course, he added this more substantial locking system to the loading lever. In fact, if we look closely here, you can actually see the original markings, Jenks, 
uh, USN right there, that, pro or that proof mark, an 1845 date, and that is the plug where the original loading hole used to be. He sealed those up. So presumably these, were, these modifications were made before they went in and opened up uh, the loading gate on, or the loading port on the Jenks carbines. In fact, it, it may very well be that they ultimately decided that uh, they didn't need to do this whole conversion. They could just open up that port from a circle into an oval and get the same basic effect for a lot less cost. Uh, however, when this was done, this had a, a profound improvement in that you could now use it, you can now use self-contained paper or linen cartridges with it because you had the physical space to load a cartridge in here where that round loading gate didn't give you enough space. With that, you were stuck with just drop in a, a round ball and then tilt it down and then pour some powder in and then close the breech behind it. And then of course when you pull the lever forward, it's going to press your self-contained cartridge all the way up into the chamber and then this locks nice and securely in place and then you're ready to fire. While he didn't get any real substantial order beyond that first small batch uh, of conversions for the Navy, Merrill would do a lot of business with the Army or with the War Department during the Civil War. He developed his own manufactured from the ground up version of this system using the same basic patent and he would market that to the Army and sell I think something like 15,000 carbines to the Army during the Civil War. So uh, while he didn't really hit it big with the Navy on this idea, he did make his money elsewhere from it. So, uh, the Merrill Arms Company would eventually survive until 1869 when it went out of business. Uh, a lot of gun companies had trouble after the Civil War because there was a huge glut of firearms on the market and not a whole lot of uh, reason for people to be buying expensive new guns when they could get perfectly suitable surplus ones uh, from the U.S. government. So, anyway, uh, with only 240 of these ever actually accepted into service, they are a quite remarkably rare gun today. If you'd like to add this one to your own collection, it is coming up for sale here uh, in the middle of April. Take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this with their value estimate, their photos, their description, and everything else you might want to know about it. Thanks for watching.